Got to keep it going. Big round of applause for Paul Hoover. It's Paul. Hey. Hey. I see a lot of good food out here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit, I'm obsessed with cooking competition shows, which is weird because I don't do any cooking whatsoever. Um, I mean, these people, they, uh, I don't know, I, it's like I'm, I'm judging these chefs with decades of experience, like, what an idiot! <laughs> I would never have put gluten-free pancake mix in my risotto. <laughs> you think in the past they had shows like that, you know? At, uh, King Henry VIII, talking to Anne Boleyn. If your child doesn't cut it, you will be jumped. <laughs> yeah, chopped. That's my favorite one. You know, they had those baskets of ingredients that are completely ridiculous, you know? Chefs, please open your baskets. And you must use Pickled piglets. <laughs> Chilean rose tarantulas. And gopher nuts. <laughs> Not what you're thinking. Guys, <clears throat> a bullet on that one. Um, then they have the other one, uh, Cutthroat Kitchen, right? Um, you know, where they do the sabotages. But the sabotages are a joke. It's like me cooking in my own kitchen, you know? I mean, chefs win this sabotage, and you can force one of your opponents to prepare their entire dish in this spoon. <laughs> Using a lighter. <laughs> I got this. I can do this. There you go. No, I can't cook. But it doesn't matter, because I know all the buzzwords. <laughs> Chefs, what I've prepared for you today is a pork tartare <laughs> served over a crostini <laughs> and drizzled with a deconstructed hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Enjoy. Um, this is an entire block of spam on top of a Ritz cracker drowned in mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but somehow there'd be one judge, you know, that would really like it somehow, you know? What you have done here is truly brilliant. The mayonnaise cuts the saltiness of the spam, giving it a creamy balance. The Ritz cracker gives it a nice texture. Overall, a very refined dish. I would serve these in my restaurant. <laughs> so uh, I have to admit, the last two weeks have been really hard on me. Uh, but now this election is over. Can we finally get back to arguing about more important things like how should we torture Justin Bieber. <laughs> now, this was a historic election. I think Trump might be the first president who walks into the White House and is like, this place is a dump. <laughs> A lot of people uh, asking how could Trump have won, you know? 
I blame Anthony's wiener. <laughs> of course we feel bad, right? Fifi just died, and now we're forced to adopt Brutus for the next four years. You know, where he's barking all the time, keeps trying to dry hump your leg, <laughs> probably to compensate for having such small paws. <laughs> working on his third bitch. <laughs> I might have gone a little too far with that one. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to keep this dog analogy going here. Just, you know. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, she's a lovely, she's a lovely woman. She is. Um, but anyway, no, it's like, it's, it's almost like there was this, we've, we've been creating this majestic sandcastle over the last eight years. <laughs> and out of nowhere, somebody walks up and <laughs> <laughs> We might be a little sad. Yeah. Yeah. Now actually, I'm excited to see Trump become president. I am. I am. I am. I mean, think about it. When he deports all those people, we'll have far less traffic on the roads. <laughs> the same. You know, eventually we'll only have to read one newspaper. I mean, you know he doesn't believe in global warming, right? So uh, next time we all have to sell our houses, we can advertise it as Atlanta. Beachfront property. <laughs> That'll be nice. And then, you know, he wants to pull uh, uh, birth control out of Obamacare. What? Yeah, absolutely, which is, which is great. Because then there'll be no more wanted pregnancies. I, uh, honestly, I didn't vote for Trump or Clinton. I voted for that third party guy. Um, Derek, what? What? Johnson. Gary Johnson? No! I would never party with that guy. Last time all he did was sit in the corner all night and hog the joint. I'm not gonna do that. So we have uh, Democrats, Republicans, Librarians. <laughs> We're all in this together. Okay. They keep trying to divide us into groups, you know, whether you're gay or straight or white. <laughs> or all three, like I am. <laughs> or some people think I am. <laughs> Can we all at least come together around the idea that this election was a disaster? Can we at least do that? There you go. There you go. All right. And in that spirit, I've written the new national anthem based on this election. No matter who you voted for, and I'd like to perform it for you now. All right. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, audacious lies For blonde waves of rogaine For purple swing state travesties Among the Rust Belt states America, America, God help us hear our plea, and cast thy vote. This is a joke from Trump to Hillary. Paul Hunter, that's the time. Thank you very much.